Hello my friends, this is your boy Frazzy Vlog, welcome to another video. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing these glasses in this video, it's because... That's whoa, 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 whoa. So that's why I'm wearing these glasses. I wear, I wear my glasses to drive anyway, so I might as well keep them on during this video. Now today in this video, we're gonna explore the Canon EF 1.8 50mm lens. So in my Bluebell video, um, if you haven't watched that, you can click the link up here. But in that video, I said I would do a an overlook and a kind of review on the 50mm and how I liked it and why it's still so good. So here is the lens, the Canon EF 1.8. Really, really light lens when it's on a DSLR you hardly even recognize that you have a lens on. That's why I love it so much. Yeah, so when I had my first DSLR camera, I bought it with the lens kit. So it was the Canon 7D and it came with the 18 to 125 one, millimeter lens. So it was a zoom lens. Shortly after that, I bought this guy. So this is the first lens excluding my kit, which I bought. I was absolutely obsessed with this lens. I watched tons of um, YouTube videos and stuff on it and reviews, so went out. And back then, I think it was only about £50 um, sterling. That's in the UK. Now it retails around the 70 80 mark, um, 70 80 pounds. And that's in PC World, Curry's, Amazon, and stuff like that, um, where you will still find this lens. And yes, it still is on the market, which is very good. Um, Canon do three 50 mils um, across their range. This is the 1.8, and then they do the 1.4, and then they do the 1.2 L lens, which is the big top dog um, of the range. But throughout this video, I'm going to tell you why this lens is worth the money and why you should. First of all, don't spend hundreds and thousands of pounds on you know an L lens or anything. Go for this lens first. If you're passionate about fixed focal length and you want those low apertures, um, which really give you a stunning effect with shallow depth of field. So let's go test this out. This is the Canon EF 1.8 50mm. Let's do it. Yo, yeah, what's up guys? So we've come to this lovely field of rapeseed you can see behind me. Um, it's died down a lot now since I did my drone video um, over the sea of yellow, um, which you click there, you haven't seen it yet. But yeah, we are here. We're gonna shoot a bunch of photos on my 50mm, as you can see here. It is mounted to a Canon 7D Mark II, my new camera. We'll go through a bunch of apertures and we'll go through um, autofocus and manual focus and we'll have a look at the video function on the Mark II as well to see how good that looks through the 50mm. So yeah, let's get it started. So all the shots there you just saw um, were done on autofocus. You know, it's quite quick, you can focus. I mean, it's probably about half a second where you can focus on um, near subjects. And the closest focusing length you can do is about 45 centimeters. So when the camera bleeps, which you can hear there. So that's when the camera can recognize there's something in front of the lens. So I think it's quite good. I mean, you don't want to be too close to a subject anyway. You'd rather get that much zoomed in effect. Um, from something quite far away and you would want to pull off the, the shallow depth of field. So the settings I've been shooting on um, is 1.8 so that's the lowest aperture this lens can do. Obviously you can go you know, right up to 22 and whatever you want but to get these shallow depth of field effects you have to shoot on 1.8. I mean 3.2 to 1.8 is kind of the best range to get that kind of look for your pictures. I'm shooting on 2000 shutter speed and 100 ISO. The day is quite cloudy, there's quite flat light, so I'm shooting quite medium shutter speed. So yeah, it performs pretty well on autofocus. You know, it allows you to get those results that you need quickly. Um, instead of to mess about with your manual skills and turning the dial. But we'll look further onto that in the course of this video. So yeah, I'm going to take a few more photos and then show you the results. So throughout those photos we saw you know some really nice colours, really nice sharpness um, within the lens. The focusing does have to be on point though, I mean you're shooting on 1.8, it's a very very shallow aperture. Um, so it is sometimes quite hard you know where the wind blows and you've got your focus and then the wind takes it out and then you know you get a blurred image so you have to be on point with your focusing. As I said though that was done on autofocus so I mean it works quite well, it's quite fast I mean like I said but you know when you're up close it does you know take you know make that kind of juddery sound to get it perfect but then once you've um 
got your right focal length there. Um, it snaps away straight away. This area though, um, behind the rapeseed fields, we don't get um, that much bokeh. But throughout my experience with this lens, um, I've come across really, really nice bokeh. I mean, it's sharp. There's no um, jaggedy edges around the little circles you get um, when you're shooting bokeh. So yeah, we're gonna head to another place now where I'm gonna see if I can try and get some nice bokeh in the background of my image um, and a foreground in focus. Also, I'll be flipping from autofocus to manual focus. So yeah, we'll see how my manual skills pan out as we continue. Let's go. So we've come to the park, Snowsboro Park, which is only down the road from me. Yeah, as it's cloudy and there's no sun, there's no like, well, you can see that it's really bright, but that's probably the, I've got my camera on a higher exposure, but we can't get that crisp bokeh in this light. Um, you can get a little bit. I've had an idea. As I'm in my car, I'm going to put my lights on, I'm going to put my hazards on, I'm going to go stand outside and I'm going to focus on the foreground. I'll probably put something like a bottle or something in or like another camera in the front of the lens. So we'll focus on that and then we'll see what the lights look behind. So we'll see what my lights look like, um, you know, with the hazards on and the bulbs and everything. Yeah, and see what that looks like. So let's try it out. Right guys, so outside now, I put my lights on and my hazards. You probably can't see them in this, in this lens because it's focusing on me, but my lights are on and my hazards are on and I've got my iPhone, which I'm going to place somewhere down on the floor here and we'll get the iPhone in focus and hopefully we'll get the rest of the frame blurred and we'll get some nice bokeh with my lights. Yeah, so what I've actually done, I put my phone on this log here and I get the car there. Um, what I'm going to actually do, I'm going to flip to live view I'm on the camera and actually video what this looks like through the 50mm lens so it's a lot easier to see for you guys. So I'm going to flip to that right now and let's have a look. So yeah, there we have it. Um, I took the trees up here, so you can actually see what the natural light looked like. So that basically shows what you can get with natural light and unnatural light. I mean, if it was a lot sunnier day, you'll get nice warm colors, and you'll probably get um, crisper circles, but as you can see on the car, you've got really, really big circles there, and they're crisp all the way around. It's actually very, very sharp. Also behind on the rear of the car, um, really awesome effects that you can do with um, the indicators there, they're like, pretty cool, um, with massive circles coming through. So yeah, I think it's to do with what setting you're in, um, if the light is right, I mean obviously if you're shooting street photography you're going to get lights everywhere, um, load of ambient lighting, and you're going to get pretty um, epic results through that way. Again, if you're shooting bokeh on a cloudy day, it's not really that worth it. Um, you get some nice effects, but you really want a sunny day when you know you've got the sun piercing through the trees and maybe behind a subject or something like that and you can really get nice shapes coming through there. Quite sharp, I mean, unless you're a Photoshop guru and a lens guru, you're going to notice a slight change in sharpness throughout um, Canon's range. But, you know, if you're just testing it out, it's your new lens, um, you've gone and bought it. Because you're passionate about shadow depth and fields, I mean, you're not going to mess around on Photoshop too much. You just want to go out there, take nice, nice pictures and see what you can do with the lens, see what you can accomplish. So yeah, we're going to shoot a little bit more, um, talk a bit more, more about the lens, and then that'll pretty much do it for the video. Compared with other lenses, i found that the 50mm has one of the most fluid manual focusing rings out there. I like those rough wide angles. You can even turn the dial only using one finger. It's not too loud when you're videoing either. And once you've mastered the skills of manual focusing with this lens, you're going to think you're the best manual focusing ring person in the world. It's that easy. So the more and more I shoot with this lens, the more I enjoy it. Um, it's just such an easy lens to put on your camera and go out and take a lot of different range of shots. You can have your whole photo in focus, or you can go down the aperture range, all the way down to 1.8, um, and get a nice shallow depth of field effect. I think a lot of people look at it as, you know, only one lens can do one thing. Um, I don't really believe in that in in sense of, you know, I agree it's a 50mm, it's only a fixed working length, but, you know, you can stand back, you can take steps back, you can take steps forward. 
Um, you can get any focal length you want really. And even though you know it's made out of plastic materials and stuff, and it's not the best quality that um, Canon can produce, but I think that works in its favour because you don't really want a 50mm which is heavy and clunky on your DSLR. You want a you want a 50mm which is light, um, which is versatile, which is portable. You know you can swing it around, swing it over your shoulder and not be uncomfortable when you're shooting. Also it's a very very good video tool. If you've got a DSLR which allows you to, to take good video then I suggest you know you do use a 50mm if you're filming. It just gives such a good mood. Also I mentioned in my voiceover that the manual focusing ring is so fluid and easy to use. It doesn't make too much noise and isn't you know hard and kind of rough like other lenses. So yeah out of the three, out of the um, 1.8, the 1.4 and the 1.2 don't splash your money first on the 1.2 or the 1.4 I mean, I don't think the 1.4 is a great deal much, much more expensive than the 1.8, but the thing is, between 1.8 and 1.4, there isn't really that much difference. I mean, 1.8 is very, very shallow anyway. Um, as I said, your focusing has to be on point um, when you're doing these things. I want to note as well, something very important that, that I made a mistake on when I first bought the 50mm. I actually went for a stage where I was saying, it's not sharp, why isn't it delivering the shots I want? And then I noticed on my DSLR, I'm um, at the top bit, the eyesight, this eyesight was out about a few clicks. So that is very important when you're shooting on a very shallow depth of field um, aperture. And I wear glasses as well, so you know it's very important to get this right. If you get this wrong um, through the lens, it may look in focus and then when you get it up on your laptop, the image is all blurred and you get very pissed off and you're very annoyed. So make sure this is in line with your eyes. Also note that to anyone who buys a new DSLR who's just buying one, make sure this is adjusted to fit your eyes. So yeah, that's very important. You don't want to go shooting out happy with a load of photos and then you get back and then they're all out of focus. So yeah, that was a big mistake that I made on that part, but it's adjusted perfect for my eyes, so yeah, I don't have any problem with that anymore. So yeah, the conclusion of this video, is it still a good lens to buy? I mean, look how long I've had it. I've had it four years already, or five years nearly, and it's still in my camera bag. I'm still taking it out, I'm still taking photos with it. Also now, you know, I'm shooting much more shallow depth of field stuff, as I mentioned in my Blue Mile video, um, that I'm gonna mix up a little bit, vary my shots a lot and you know use the whole range of my lenses in my camera bag so yeah i'm using it a lot more in the future it's a stunning lens and i recommend you know if anyone has a dslr they should have this lens in their camera bags it'll expand your photography um it'll take you to the next level and you know teach you things with the manual focus and getting your apertures right and your shutter speed and everything like that so yeah it's a very good lens to give you those options if you want to expand your photography so yeah do i really need to upgrade to 1.4 than 1.2 i don't really know i think is there really a need for them is there really a need to, for me to splash out you know two thousand pounds and go get the 1.2 l lens i mean yeah it would be sharper um you could get more shallow depth of field in your photos but you know this works for me now i'm going to continue shooting on it um continue to expand my photography and go in there and, and, and mix it up so yeah i uh, will to continue to shoot on my 50 mil and be very happy with it so yeah i just wanted to make this video to, to overlook the 50 mil and i think it is the 50 mil to have for only 70 quid i mean it's pretty much that nifty 50 that bargain lens which you can have in your camera bag um which doesn't cost a bomb so yeah and then for the effects it's definitely worth it so yes guys, I think that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If I said any information wrong, please do comment down below um, and let me know. But yeah, that was my whole conclusion of my video on the 50mm EF 1.8 by Canon. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos. This has been your boy Frazzy Vlog. Subscribe, like, comment, share, and I'll see you in my next video.